Well, first of all, first of all, uh, what an uh, unbelievable crowd tonight. Um, I mean, I've, I've never seen it like that. I mean, it was different. And uh, there's so much energy, <clears throat> you know, so, much, so many festivities, so much loud music. It was awesome. Uh, our fans were incredible. They played a huge role in the game, in my opinion. Um, just looking back on the game, I mean, I'm awfully proud of our football team, <clears throat> how they've prepared all through fall camp for a game that nobody thought we could win, the group that you know, most people have given up on. Um, to come out and play like that really makes me proud. And basically, in the first half, I felt like, I mean, this is not literal, but I felt like the offense played the whole first half and the defense played the whole second half. Um, you know, we, we tried to deliberately try and keep the ball away from North Carolina a little bit. And it worked pretty well in the first half. The second half, you know, it didn't work as well. And we had several opportunities to kind of end the game, and we could not do it. Our execution was poor. But our defense just continued to rise to the occasion. Uh, with energy and execution, we looked fast. Um, I was really proud of the defensive staff, and Coach Hamilton, and the defensive players. Um, you know, you look at Peter Moore really punting in his first game, had a good game. Parker, I know he missed the, the short field goal, but he drills the big long one. Um, there's so many, so many plays and. Uh, just a great, great team effort. Justin, you just said that people got, had written you guys off and. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't. Like, um, you know, perception and all that sort of stuff. I mean, we just continue to try and teach the right things and try to be about the right things. And um, I do feel good about this group. I mean, there's a long season ahead of us and a million variables up there in the air. But I do, I do feel good about this group. And, um, and they got rewarded tonight. So... It is just one game. You know, we'll enjoy it. We'll work a little bit tomorrow. And then Sunday, we've got to get ready to go. So uh, it's nice to get to enjoy it for a little bit, but we've got to turn the page. With the operation, you mentioned slowing it down in the first half. Was it similar to what you did against Clemson? And what was kind of the instructions for Braxton not to snap to like five seconds? Or what was kind of the, the plan there? Well, we, we, we still wanted to be able to you change the tempo. Like I, I did not direct the offensive staff that they had to snap the ball every single time under five seconds. But, you know, when the clock was running, we kind of wanted to keep it running. And, you know, we did it a little bit in the Virginia game, too, at the end of the year. And I just think it, it's, it has helped our defense play a little bit faster and stay a little bit fresher. I mean, but you got to stay on the field. It doesn't do you any good, like as you saw in the second half, particularly at the start of it, when you just go three and out. It doesn't do any good. But, um, so I mean, we we were we still wanted to be able to to do that, you know, manipulate the tempo. But by and large, we were going to try and slow it down a little bit. And then on Bra one more on Braxton, his agility. You mentioned all summer off season that it wasn't about designed runs. It was plays like that touchdown throw to Mitchell. How hard of a throw was that? And how impressed with you were that that he was able to get in that tight window? Well, I don't think he was throwing it to James personally. You have to ask him. I think he was throwing it to Tavion. That's my take on it. Oh, that was a great catch. I mean, the ball was moving, and it, James just jumped, you know, kind of reached up there and snatched it out of the air. So, uh, but he did make some plays with his feet. You know, he has some plays. I just, you know, I saw him in the locker room. He's a little bit down that he didn't play better, <clears throat> you know, there towards the end. But, um, but he, you know, he is going to have opportunities to make plays with his feet. We don't have to call very many run, you know, very many run plays with him. Uh, we had a couple today, but uh, he's going to get opportunities 
to go to go make plays. Well, I mean, we've got all our guys back, too. You know, I kind of like our guys. So um, I think part of the key to that is continuing to play multiple people, you know, continuing to rotate those guys through. We aren't super deep. We don't have an excess of them, but we do have a two deep that we can roll through there. So uh, staying, staying fresh, um, moving the front a little bit, changing the front up, I think helped us a little bit, um, you know, getting them I don't know what the statistics say, but I'm just telling you how I felt in the game. I felt like there was a time in there when, when they weren't, you know, there wasn't as much run game to worry about. You could pin your ears back just a little bit. Andy, speak up. We don't have the mics. Last year, you guys didn't have a full defense. But they put up a lot of points, a lot of yards. I'm curious, what was the difference in that group this year as opposed to a mindset coming off? Was it a wounded pride type thing that they were very focused coming into this? Or what did you see? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, certainly that was a game that you know many of the guys you saw play tonight didn't play in that game, and um, I mean that wasn't the only rallying cry. I mean, this is a divisional game at home with the fans back, and you know there's a lot more to it than just that. But but there is an element of giving a having an opportunity for the coaches and the and the players to to sort of have a chance to put their best foot forward, forward so to speak. Well, I don't know that there was anything revolutionary about it other than when it came down to it, uh, we needed to be able to win. We were, no matter how we drew it up, there was going to come times when we were going to be in one-on-one -on -one situations and, you know, in the secondary. And we had to be able to hold up. You're not going to stop them all. They're too good and he throws the ball too well and they do too much stuff in the run game for you to, to just drop everybody into coverage. But the times, on, particularly on the outside, then we were singled up. I thought we held up uh, pretty darn well and eliminated those huge plays that they've been kind of known for the last couple of years. That, uh, that certainly helped out. David. Justin, both you and Bill Tierlink during preseason said Taiwan is, quote, back, unquote. Did he look the part tonight? He did from upstairs. Uh, from what I could tell, he looked pretty active. You know, he just – he plays really hard. And um, he's just – you know, he's a bigger – you know, it's kind of like um, as a younger player, he was always so thin and a little bit undersized. And he's – you know, he's now, a, he's now a mature guy. I mean, he's added weight and, you know, has some more physical strength to go with that kind of tenacity that he's always had, and I think it's helping him play, play better. And then Blackshear t mm -hmm. tonight just seemed dynamic. You, you got him in space. Is that the guy you envisioned when you got him from Rutgers? Yeah, and, I, and again, I've said this before, and I think I, we did a disservice to him, you know, last year with, this, with no spring ball and very limited fall camp and moving him all over the place. But... He does have a, a, a pretty special skill set that I think there are some things you can do with him to, to, to get into the ball in the passing game and running the football. And um, I wish we would hit him on that one there uh, in the fourth quarter. We just, uh, Brax just missed him. We, I think we had him a chance for a big play there. But, um, but yeah, that's, you know, I don't know that, I don't know how many catches he had tonight, but it, he had a few. And I don't know that he'll always have that many, but he, he certainly is a weapon in that manner. Hey, Justin, when you said in your opening that this was different in terms of the atmosphere, was there a particular moment when you realized that it was different? I mean, yeah, play we were on or... offense. <laughs> we were on offense, and it was still bonkers. You know, like the first drive, you know, it's like there's so much energy in the stadium, and there's just like – you, you want to facilitate the, the energy, but, you know, we're now in the huddle. We're not huddling up. We're not signaling things. So now it's even, you know, it's even more important that we be able to communicate. But it was uh, 
it's I would say the sustained energy in the in the stadium from the kickoff to to the end uh, is like they didn't get tired. You know, sometimes it, the crowd gets a little tired, and I, that was, certainly was not the case tonight. It was sustained from the kickoff to the end. <clears throat> Justin, I, I noticed a lot of former players too on the sidelines tonight. What kind of impact did they have in a game like this? And uh, were, were there more than usual? It seemed like. Yeah, it was. Um, it was so cool. As soon as I felt like it, they they started coming out of the woodworks whenever it was announced as a sellout. It was like whenever it was announced as a sellout, that's when my phone started blowing up from from all our guys wanting to come back. And um, I said, "Come on, man! We need all of us to go get this done." And um, it's really cool to see them with the pride in the players that were younger players when they were here and to watch them develop and, and have success tonight and be there to support them is, uh, was, a, was a cool thing. And it's fun for us, selfishly. I know we've got a game to play, but, you know, I don't get to see Greg Stroman very often. And I don't, I don't get to see um, Terrell. And, you know, now that CD's off in grown-up world, I don't get to see those guys anymore. So it's, it's pretty cool, selfishly, for us to get to see him again. A couple questions on the different guys. For Nasir Peoples getting the start, um, you know, his first career start, guy that got injured right at the end of fall camp last year, uh, how big was he for that effort in the secondary? Really good. You know, we rotated guys in there too, you know. I mean, Dev got in there in the boundary safety and Peeps did. And, you know, uh, Peeps has provided uh, really quality versatility for us, you know. Um, and, and depth, and uh, it's good to see him because, and I, I think we talked about it a little bit when he got hurt last year. I mean, he was really coming on right right when he got hurt, and it was a really, you know, it was a sad injury because you could see it. I mean, I, literally like three plays before that, you know, I grabbed him and said, you are turning into a ball player, and you know, it was like I jinxed him. And um, three plays later in Skelly, you know, he's hurt. so. He's worked his tail off to get back, and it's nice to see him get out there and have some success. Jalen Holston's numbers don't jump out, but I mean, he, I think he converted like five short yarded situations. Um, successful day. I mean, even though you don't know, only less than 40 yards, but I mean, he kind of came through for you guys. It seemed like absolutely. I mean, I still say that he's the guy that the that can do a lot for us, you know, and. Uh, he runs hard. He understands his identity as a running back. You know, he knows, you know, he's really intelligent, so he knows everything about protection and what's going on big picture-wise. And, and, you know, special teams were a little quiet. It's a low-scoring game. You know, they fair caught the kickoff returns. So there wasn't a lot of action there, but he's a really productive core member in that as well. So. Um, you know, he had, a, he had a really good night, even though he will always do things, you know, that don't necessarily show up in the stat sheet. A couple more, David. Last year, you guys were depleted on defense, but you only had one sack and three tackles for loss. Tonight, nine tackles for loss, six sacks. How much, you know, first game of the season, how much does that defense, you said the defense kind of carried the second half. How, how impressed were you with that defensive effort? Well, I just, you know, we kept putting them back out there in the second half and we couldn't get the final score you know we get the ball down there and you know we're we're out of bounds and then we we overthrow a ball and then we miss a field goal you know all those things that happened we couldn't put the game away and yet the defense continued to rise to the occasion against a very talented you know a, a top flight quarterback with with talent around him so uh, as impressive as the performances I've seen I mean it was it was incredible to continue to answer the bell uh, there in the second half was really impressive. Sticking with that theme, there's high expectations for Barno this year. He seemed extremely disruptive tonight. Uh, what did you see from his play and how important is he to what you're doing? Well, he's still learning how to play the position at the run game and the, and the pass rush element. Um, you know, he did some things where, um, which they've, you know, we've, We've seen this in camp a few times where he's kind of a spy. You know, he's not necessarily rushing, but when the quarterback breaks out, I mean, he sucks him up in two or three steps. And, um, you know, we had a couple of those in fall camp where it was Braxton and Barno, you know, and it was, 
you know, I got to blow, blowing the whistle pretty quick when that was happening. But, um, you know, he just he just does a couple different things for us, and you know, he's gonna he's got to continue to to improve, you know, by all means. But, um, you know, they've seemed to have they being the coaching staff has has found you know a couple of niches for him that that have been really productive. One more, Mike. You mentioned Peter Moore and those fifty yard punts. How I mean, those are moments that might get overlooked, but. Can kind of came at pivotal situations to pin them back in a stressful moment. How big of a test was that for him to answer right off the front of the Sure. Time? And, you know, I told Peter, you know, I stand back there during punt, punt period. And if it's, if it's over 2.0 in the get off or if it's a shank, that they, they, they owe me 10 push ups. And whenever we play that game, Peter's money. And I just grabbed him for the game, said, just pretend like there's 10 push ups on the line. Okay. It's no, no different. And, you know, we've got confidence in him and, and Parker, even though those guys haven't done, maybe haven't handled the field goal duties or handled the punt duties on a regular basis, but we've seen them in practice and feel good about them. And it was really nice. I'm sure it was nice for Peter too when he hit the first one and, um, you know, it was, you know, kind of flipped the field there. All right. Thank you, Coach. Yep. And we'll up next.